What is your full name? Peter Spenziale. When were you born? Nineteen. You want to even the day, the twenty-eighth day, eight month, nineteen thirty-five. Where were your parents born? They born in Italy. Uh, when did you move to Scriber? I moved to Scriber in December, nineteen fifty. Where were your grandparents born? Yeah, they were born in Italy also. Uh, when did you get married? I got married 18th of July, 1959. Uh, what is your spouse's name? Maria. Uh, how did you meet? Well, she was going to school and I was going to night classes. And that's how we met. How many children do you have? I have six. Three girls and three boys. What about grandkids? Grandkids. I have 16 grandkids. If you're going to ask me the names, I'll probably be here for another 10 minutes to tell you all of them. But I. <laughs> you want to know the names? No, I have 16 grandchildren. What did you do for a living? Well, I st when I came in in 1950, I started working for. 1951. I started work in 1951. I worked for a grocery store, and the people they owned was Kakamos. And I worked, started working as a delivery boy, and I was making 85 cents an hour, that much. And after a couple of years, uh, stocking shelves and doing delivery, and I, I got into the butcher shop, and I butchered, I cut meat for another 17 years. And I quit that 1970 because I had bad back, and the doctor says I have to get out of the butcher shop and lift heavy stuff and uh, and get into the cold and warm, cool and warm. So he, see, he suggested I get out of the butcher shop. So I did that, and then we had I started my own store, which was called Western Tire. And then from then, the store got a little small, and Western Tire kind of faith away. They kind of disappeared. So we started the uh, Pro Hardware Store, 1980. And uh, Pro, Hard Pro Hardware now is, it started, it's, it's happened the same thing. And now we're with Napa. The source and the auto pro subscriber here. So the auto pro is a garage. The source is sell electronic stuff, and Napa sells car parts, not automotive. How has it changed over the years? Oh well, yes, it sure does. Did there used to be at least two thousand people in Schreiber. And we used to have all kinds of customers. Now we probably have about a thousand. And the business, it's kind of slowing down. The tax goes up, insurance goes up, electricity goes up, but we got less people <laughs> to buy. That's, a, that's, that's the change we have right now, and it's a challenge just to try to, try to survive. Can you tell me about your hobbies and pastimes when you were growing up? When well, I was growing up, the best uh, that I recall would have been uh, I. We didn't have hockey like you guys have, but we had played soccer. Uh, because uh, where I come from, uh, came from was uh, pretty warm. In the winter time, we never had any snow or or ice. So we played soccer. What is your favorite memory of Scriber while you were growing up? Memory of Scriber while was I growing up? Well, I tell you, I, one thing I found for Scriber was is that the f people of Scriber were very friendly, nice people to talk to, and that's one thing. I remember that where I built my store. Pro or pro hardware store. That used to be the arena there, 
And I remember when it was a hockey game, people, you know where Siberia store is. They lined up there between Siberia's and the church, and they lined up over there, all the way down to the arena to go to the hockey game. It was a very, very busy place in those days, but not as much now. Yeah, it's, I think it's only memory that I can tell you about only thing that it's good fishing, good hunting. <laughs> what did you do for fun as a child? Child, when I was a child, like I said, we played soccer and uh, we, we used to go riding the bike like you guys are, but in the family we didn't have five, six bikes like you have. We only had one. <clears throat> and we had to put their name down who's, who's going to ride the next. So, because they only had one bike, it's all we could afford one bike. Happy, I used to go down the ocean. We used to live maybe uh, 10 minutes away from the ocean, and we used to go swimming uh, on the ocean for fun. Stuff like that. Play with your friends, like you do here now. And that's it. What was your favorite sport growing up? Sports? I have to go back again. Growing up, uh, it would be uh, soccer, but my favorite sports right now, it's hockey. Watch hockey, the Maple Leaf lose. Were you good at any? Good on, oh, good on soccer, yeah, but not on hockey. I never had skates on. How have things changed since you were a child? How have things changed? Well, technology changed for sure. Uh, we uh, <laughs> were limited what we could do, where we could go. Those days, well, we we never said to my dad or my mother, "Hey, we want to go to, to Thunder Bay, for an example, for a weekend," or because first of all we couldn't afford it, and then uh, we didn't have those days. We didn't have vehicles like they do have now. I remember leaving home. We had four or five cars. We had a four or five cars in in Italy, where I come from. So when I came to Scrape in 1950, there was only about four or five here, too. So that wasn't very many here, either. So uh, now everybody's got, you, you, you probably, your dad probably and mother have two vehicles. Everybody else has two vehicles. No, 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 those days, you had to walk. Well, what was your favorite food as a child? Well, if I tell you any different, I would be lying. My favorite food is uh, was spaghetti and meatballs, like you. What was your favorite treat? Treat? Well, a chocolate bar. Yeah, that was a treat. Did you have a nickname growing up? <sighs> well, they, they call me up here, they call me Peter Western. Where did it come from? <clears throat> Where did the name come from? That's because I had a Western Tire store, and there's few Peters. Like, I have a cousin named Peter. So, uh, for, to recognize me, they used to call me Western Pete. Uh, what, what did you get as a child for Christmas? <laughs> <clears throat> we didn't have too many toys those days when I was a child. But most of the things we ever got was uh, my mother would wrap up a parcel package with favorite things like uh, chocolate, uh, candy, stuff like that, and we'd get that for Christmas. And uh, I remember, this is a good one, <clears throat> I remember we had a little Christmas tree, it was really small, on the table. And my mother used to wrap candy, different candy, and hang them on the tree, those candy. So when Christmas come, we used to go and get those candy out of the tree. My brother, my brother, he liked sweets. 
He liked candy very much. So what he did, this is a true story, what he did was <clears throat> he went in, got the candy out of the package, wrapped up a little stone inside there and hang him up on the tree. So <laughs> when Christmas came, we went to get the candy out of the tree, wrapped up, we opened up and there was a, no candy, it was just a stone. And every, every little thing hanging up had a stone in it. My brother didn't show up <laughs> because he was the guilty one. He ate them all. That was a, that was a true story. <laughs> Your most memorable gift? Uh, of all the things, when I was young, I remember when I left, I left, well, I guess I was not really young. I left Italy when I was 15. And of course, you could say, I was growing up, I guess. And I left on my own, not with a family. So that was a kind of a, I remember, trip on the boat for, ship for about the, Twelve days, you know, that was that was a really uh, something. Then we often hear stories about how our grandparents used to have to walk miles to school in bare feet, sometimes uphill both ways. Well, I used to walk when I was a kid, and uh, I remember that I was looking for a rainy day because it was raining. We had a little river have to cross and uh, if the water was too high because I didn't have to, we couldn't cross it so I didn't have to go to school so I was so happy <laughs> and we used to walk we used to walk and not drive we didn't, couldn't use a bicycle either we used to walk and I walked probably took me about 20 25 minutes to walk to school every day what was it like for you growing up to going to school? Well, I liked school. I listened to the teacher. And uh, I, uh, we used to go to school half a day in Italy. And then they give you homework to do in the afternoon. So I can hardly wait until I got the work. Because my mother said I have to get the schoolwork done and then we go and play with the rest of the kids. Did you like school? Yes, I loved school. I loved to go to school. I enjoyed school. I remember one time <coughs> the teacher used to set a high a little higher on his desk. And uh, she asked me if I can get her a long stick so he could hit you a little bit over the head if you didn't, you know, if you were talking and didn't listen to her. So, oh, I spent all day after school, the rest of the day after school, to find this beautiful stick, and I cleaned it all up, and I, I put some varnish and everything, it was really nice. It was probably about a good 10 feet long. And the first one, you know who got the stick? Me. The teacher says, well, you know, you got the, the nice stick, and I said, you have to try it first. Bang, I got bang on the head. I remember that one. What would you do in the summertime? What would I do in the summertime? Over there? What I was doing in the summertime, like I told you, I would maybe go swimming, uh, play soccer, uh, play with my friends like you are. Work, work in the, work in the field. We had, uh, we had uh, vineyard that grow the grapes, and then you make the wine. So we made our own wine. We stumped with our feet those days, the wine. Then we had a factory that we had olive trees. And uh, everybody that needs 
to get oil. They used to bring the olives to our factory and we used to crush the olives and give them the oil. So we used to get the, we used to do that for them. Do you have any interesting stories about Scrabber? Interesting story? Hmm. What can I tell you about Scrabber? It's like I said earlier, it used to be 2,000 people or more, now it's in about 1,000. So we're, the population is going down, because, especially because to go to school, to get your degree in school, you have to move away, and then people don't come back. And uh, job is not here like they used to. They got lots of machinery and stuff like that, so they probably need less people. What interests me is uh, up here, and it probably does you too, because you have a snowmobile, but we have a cottage way back in the bush. And uh, Louis Lake, you probably went there through a few times yourself. And I love winters because I like snowmobile. And that's what interests me. Uh, the reason that's why I, I uh, when I came to this country, I moved to Toronto for about five months, 1951. And I worked as a dry cleaning place in Toronto. But I have to get up five o'clock in the morning and get up a, a bus and then switch a couple of times before I go to work. So I, I thought it was, the pace was too fast for me. I wasn't used to that. So I come back here again and swear everywhere slow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what happened. What story or memory would you like me to tell my children about when you one day? When you're growing up, tell your children what you're going to tell your children. Make sure that they have an education, that's number one. You've got to go to school. Without an education, you can't do a thing. You've got to have that diploma before you can get a job. No, because you're way, way smarter, but you have to have that piece of paper for you to get that job. So that's number one, you gotta tell your children, make sure they go to school and get that diploma so they could, so they could cope with the, uh, with the things going on today. And uh, <laughs> what else can you tell them? Uh, to listen to you? Uh, to behave, uh, never get in trouble, and uh, get along with the community. About me, you can tell them <laughs> that uh, Grandpa he, uh, is a good fisherman, he was a good fisherman, he's a good hunter, he, uh, he's a very good gardener, he plant peas for us, the fabi beans which we love. And every day, they ask, "Is my is a, they ask if the peas is ready, Grandpa?" I said, "Not yet, not yet. It's growing." And uh, he was really good at what we, he was doing. He really loved the garden. And uh, he good, was a good provider. And uh, we listen to Grandpa. I think Scriber is a very nice place to live. I know that I, I have friends and I have relatives, grandkids, and they love to come to Scriber. They, when they leave Scriber, they almost cry because they like to stay more. And like I said, the Scriber is a very friendly town. And uh, it's got a lot of history. There's all kinds of different people come from different countries. There's German, and there's Polish, and there's Italian, and there's French, and there's all kind. And they see, we seem to get along very good in Schreiber. Very good work, we're working together. And uh, we find it's a good place, very good place to live. Driver.